And welcome to another edition of the Big Head Pod here on the Dub Network. Hope everybody had a good holiday season. Today we're going to go down a little bit different route. I know we've, as kids, we tend to do a lot of dumb stuff, riding bikes, jumping off buildings, doing all kinds of stuff. And my next guest is somebody that made a living doing it. So without further ado, Mr. Morgan, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks yes. for having me. Yes, sir. Absolutely. A local guy. Ish. Correct? Yeah, ish. Well, it's Texas, right? Anything that's within two hours is oh, yeah. considered yeah. local. For sure. Right? So I've, you know, you know, reading up on you and stuff, you were X Games. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. How many years of doing the X Games? Uh, let's see. It's been... Well, this year will be 20 years. 20 years of, yeah. and what was your, what's the spec? I mean, I, I watch so, it on TV and just trying to figure it out, but there's so much that goes into it. So freestyle BMX, there's different types of BMX. You have BMX racing, which yep. is, you know, those are actual athletes in my opinion. And then you have like the, the dudes that eat junk food and just want to show off the tricks that they learned. That's the freestyle guys. That's where I kind of fit in. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're just a bunch of idiots that like doing stupid tricks and, and having a good time while doing it. And, uh, so I do uh, freestyle BMX, which my, you know, if you had to put a label on on my type of riding, it would be more like park riding. So like the ramps, like skate park type okay. stuff. But uh, I also dabble with just about everything as far as that freestyle goes. So like dirt jumps, street riding, uh, flatland a little bit. Not very much in the flatland, but I dabble. I dabble a little bit. And then at X Games, when they started doing the uh, big air event, which is like the mega ramp, uh, is that the one we see how high, how many, how yeah. high you can go? Is it based on how you? Is it the back tire I see that gets kicked up to the height, or how do uh, they base it? I'm not sure exactly how like ESPN does it. I'm I'm not a I'm not a hundred percent that I agree with how they do it. I I actually think that they they judge it a little bit. They put you a little higher than you actually were. Okay. If that was, yeah. if that was they the way I the look number. at it. Yeah, so like if I see like the replay and I'm like, oh, that wasn't like what I thought. And then they show the height and I'm like, eh, that, I mean, they helped me out. So I'm not going to like argue with it. It makes it look like it went a little higher. But it's, you know, it's the height is a big part of it on that ramp because uh, it's it's actually like a 80 foot roll in to a 65 ish foot jump yeah. and then a, a 30 foot quarter. It's 27 and a half actually. Uh, and then, yeah, the higher you go out of the quarter, it's called big air. So, yeah. like, that does help you, but it also, uh, you have to incorporate tricks and, and whatnot. What kind of speed are you getting going smoothly. down there? Uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, I, I want to say it's like 55 miles an hour or 60, somewhere in that neck of the woods for the, the 70 foot gap. When it was a true 70 foot, they shortened it a little bit. So, the speed varies a little bit. And it also depends on, like, the moisture in the air and all because sometimes the ramp will be set up exactly the same but you have to try harder to go farther or the inverse of that you go farther without trying so i remember as a, as a kid the bikes that we would get the bmx bike, they were really heavy are they modified now to where <clears throat> you know you'll see um like the the 10 speeds now that way you can pick them up with your finger are, mm -hmm. are they lightweight or are they how are they are they made are they made different or so is your big air bike different than the one you go ride courses with or is it so the the weight f fluctuates, goes up and down. You know, there's always like differences. Like you know, every sport has its its cycle. But can you goes cheat through. though? Like so, NASCAR. No. Type of so thing. the bike I ride for Big Air is the same bike that I ride for everything okay. else. Like I, I don't have I only have one bike, and I just trade out parts as I wear them out, yep. so to speak. So I don't have just a bunch of bikes laying around. I have a lot of parts laying around, mostly just the parts that I that I break regularly. But um, my bike weighs about twenty two pounds. And like a lot of like the guys that you see like doing like the uh, Olympic type stuff, uh, the the park riding for that, they have much lighter bikes even than that. More like you know, and when I say much lighter, I mean probably closer to what like eighteen pounds, nineteen pounds, something like that. So like, there's a lot of guys that are what I call weight weenies, and they're like. <laughs> They want to get you know the titanium cranks and like the super light pedals and oh, this yeah. and that and they they get hollow bolts for everything and titanium this and that and I have some light stuff but I find there's kind of a sweet spot where I don't actually I don't like a bike that's too light so because it doesn't uh, fly the same in the air so you want to have something that's stable in the air it kind of carries its own its own uh, you know trajectory as opposed to something that's uh, twitchy and like. Too easy to move. Yeah. Yes, going, yeah, riding down the hills and 
Yeah, hill bombs but, are the best. With base, sometimes the brakes didn't work, right? I mean, front brakes. Some of them had dump, you know, front and back. So some of them were freewheel. A lot of guys don't have any brakes these days. Like, it's actually pretty popular. Why? Because of weight? No brakes. Uh, I think it's more um, aesthetics of how it looks when you ride. Because it changes how uh, the mechanics of the bike work for certain tricks. So, okay. like, you have to, like, have your weight in a different spot and you rely more on balance than on being able to, like, feather a brake or whatever. Or you jam your foot in the tire instead of hitting, okay. hitting the brake. Stuff like that. But a lot of guys don't have brakes. And, I, and I've ridden without brakes for tons of times. But it's not because I'm trying to, you know, look a certain way. It's because my bike brakes, literally, no pun intended something the cable snaps or whatever and I'm too lazy to fix it so I'll just keep riding it the brakes are more I guess for the tricks like we were talking last night on the phone about you know, back on the Miami Hopper when we, we were when I was going out Miami Hopper the, be hard to do without brakes yeah was the big was yeah. I think the big one doing it and watching people if you guys get a chance Google the Miami Hopper it's probably the most insane trick <laughs> I've ever seen and it was big I don't know if kid people are still doing it but you just I, I know a few guys that do it but they were riding back then yes so. and it's just and just seeing that in general but the, you're right the the brakes are they so they're no even the freewheel so they're just freewheel there's no foot brake either when you talk no brakes yeah, so we use cassettes actually um so the rear hub like all the the mechanism is all in, internal in the hub so like the freewheel is actually something that screws on the outside yeah. and it's like so those those went away probably around the year 2000 or, or or so, something like that. So that's old. That's old news. But I was riding those back then. So it just, there's a lot that, that goes date, into that, the bike. Dates me a little bit. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I mean, I get the bike. You know, kids are riding bikes around the yeah. house, and I'm yeah. trying to figure. All right, well, that little bar makes it so freewheel. Take it off. And I had actually, when I was a kid, probably eight or nine, we were at a cousin's house riding bikes, and I was used to the foot brake. Yeah, the coaster brake. Yeah, know. I went to mm -hmm. stop, didn't do it. Ended up with 22 stitches. Then I hit a rock, was bleeding everywhere, and yeah. ever since then, I just because that's the first thing I want to see is a free wheel because our kids do the same thing. Yeah. But sometimes, or you'll squeeze the front brake too hard and mm -hmm. right over the front. So I, gosh. But so I mean, the. the I remember the first time yeah. I used front brakes. Yeah. I, <laughs> and I think I should just take them all off. Yeah, you have any video of that too? would be cool. Yeah. I got video of that guy. I got some video of Spencer. That Spencer Bass in the background back here just <laughs> laughing of knowing that he's been. He's broken a lot of bones. And we, actually else, made, so. we actually made a little piece, a little chunk of change before he, he ventured into the, the current job he's got. We made a little bit of change selling uh, a video that I took of him riding a show. He did a front <laughs> flip and overshot the jump and over rotated the front flip and landed on his face on the concrete. And I filmed it and then we ended up selling it to uh, True TV World's Dumbest. <laughs> it was pretty, did you lose any chiclets, Spencer? No, no. He snored for a while, though. He was, I, he was out, out. It made for a really good, a really funny story, but so, but so pre Spencer was he? Were you full beard, long hair type of thing? How we, riding wise was he? Was he that type of guy as well, or was he more of a? Uh, I don't think he. Could, I don't guy. think he could grow facial hair at that time. And he, he did have a little more hair on top though, at the, at the time, but. But it's amazing how this. The, the, no, you're like yes, yes. We'll have to just Google your name, people, and you can see who Spencer yeah. is. So the, the camaraderie that's built with you guys, right? Even it's different. It's, is there anything between now the, the So when you talk about the racers, that's the one where the mm -hmm. front drops and everybody goes type yeah. of thing. Yeah, and that's just. Pedal as fast as you can. And those, those dudes actually watch what they eat. They work out. They do cardio. They do. Oh my gosh! Yeah. That's like not, I said, so that's not for athletes. us. Then. That's not for us. No. Yeah. We we don't do that. We're built for comfort. What a burger. Speed. Yes. What a burger. Perfect. So I mean, so how do you so how do you train for something like that to be able to, to let's jump 80, 90 feet in the air? How do you train? Do you build one of these in your backyard or what, no, what do you so, do? So uh, as far as like kind of like taking it back a step, like uh, camaraderie wise, between yeah. riders. Just about everybody is friends. So, yeah. like, it's it's very, it's competitive, but um, there's not very many guys that actually dislike each other in the sport, which is actually kind of nice. And I think that's mm, maybe somewhat rare, you know. I mean, we, I, I don't think I've, have I ever seen in a contest someone punching someone in the face? Like, you know, Toronto and Texas. I don't think I've, so, so I don't think I've actually seen something like that. But... There are some guys, obviously, but uh, but for the most part, everyone's friends. When we're up on like mega ramp, so to speak, uh, for instance, uh, there's 10, 10 riders up there yep. or eight, whatever the 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 lot is for that the event, and uh, everyone wants to see everyone pull their tricks and yeah. do well. And for the most part, everyone that's up there is capable of putting together a winning run if they're on it that day. And some guys are on it more often than others, and they're the ones that usually are at the top most of yep. the time. But 
pretty much everybody's capable of putting together a winning run if they are able to put together. And we all want to see each other succeed. None of wants to see each no. other get hurt or anything like that. And that is pretty dangerous. So that is a, a concern. But for the most part, we're all having the time of our lives up there and we're enjoying being around each other and, and, and having kids. a good time. Just session together. Yeah, exactly. You're big kids. Cool. Yeah. So does this in golf encompass the, when you talk about the X, the world of X Games, mm -hmm. right? Because there's winter X Games and mm -hmm. summer X Games. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. That whole gamut of guy is that that type like the same with for instance baseball we're all baseball players it doesn't matter you know we're all trying to the mm -hmm. ultimate goal is is it the same thing is on that spectrum of you know the snowboarders with with the bike with the with the bmx guys are they is there any or are they is there any really crossover a at crossover? all yeah yeah, yeah for sure yeah i mean like the the easiest connection to make would be like skating and and, and biking now historically there's been some 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 prickly edges between skaters and bikers at skate parks and stuff like that. But for the most part, when you get to like the top levels, the guys, no one really cares about that so much. Yeah. Like everyone, everyone gets along the kind of the same way I was just talking about between the bikes. Mm -hmm. Cause there's obviously like for mega ramp, for example, there's all the skaters up there too. And for years they had a split practice where like the skaters had skate practice and the bikers had bike practice. And that ramp is literally one person at a time. Like you drop in, you get off, the next person goes. And we are all friends, so we're for years we we're like, just open the practice up for everybody. Because yeah. we're we're tired of showing up at this time and you only have two hours, and then you have to get off the ramp and this and that. And then finally, a few years back, they opened it up and they basically just said, Hey, practice is open all day for everybody. Because it's just skate and BMX on that ramp. And so and we would always like, you know, a couple guys would come over and they'd be like, Hey, can we skate? during the bike practice. And we'd be like, yeah, for sure, come on, skate. And then vice versa, if, if dudes wanted to keep riding after our yeah. practice was over, we'd be like, hey, we're gonna take some more runs and no one no one cared. And you know, they finally caught wind of that and we're like, oh, okay, we can just leave it open and, and everyone bike. everyone gets along. So yeah, there, there is a good crossover. And even between other sports, there's that, um, it's the same mentality, like, Kind of headspace as yeah. far as it goes. Different sport, same headspace. So there is a connection. Or lack of well. headspace, right? Or to, lack of headspace. Be... Or concussion space, whatever you want to call it. How many of those you had? Too many. Spencer, you too? I'm pretty sure across the board, uh, extreme sports athletes probably get like triple the head, the concussion and brain injuries of like major league sports Try. because I'm pretty sure they <laughs> cut you guys off at some point and they're like, this is too dangerous. Now football is pretty gnarly, but as far as like, you don't see dudes snoring on the ground too often unless their heart fails Yeah, from who knows what these days. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. And that's great to see the more Hamlin is actually responsive and everything else. You know, it's yeah. good for him and, and, and oh, what, absolutely. That's, what that's absolutely. created because that that's it. So you talk about that camaraderie, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure with, in, in your events, in, there have been people killed, right, during events doing this stuff or any of the... I, I don't... Jeremy, uh, maybe a one or two. Well, yeah, but that's not... I mean, that's obviously that's... Not, not BMX. And yeah. uh, more, Caleb Moore. But that was that was a little bit after the fact, un unfortunately. Both he, very similar crashes, but, but nothing in BMX, I don't think. I want to say there was a kid in Europe that got like a peg to the chest or something and had like an internal thing and, and passed away. But the, like, it's very, very rare. Yeah. And even, a, even like, like what Spencer was saying, like moto and like snowmobile, whatever, like even across those lines, it's still very rare. You yeah. Know? So, so, I mean, it, and it's what, have you ever, have you ever skated and tried the skate side of it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Is I, that I, where I, you start as a kid? Is it one of those where you just went bike and you did, I mean, as kids I we mean, ride everything, yeah, right? You play around with everything, but after I obviously settled into like BMX and did that and, and then for years I was a professional BMXer and I was like before I ever like was like I'm gonna drop in on a skateboard on this mini ramp and I, I was like I'm gonna try it I got up there did it perfect no problem I was like that wasn't so bad and then I tried it again and it went straight to my face <laughs> And I was like, that was the last time I tried it. So there's definitely a learning curve. It is. And I just, I could never, I skateboard it. You know, I, even now I'll get on it. And yeah. kids, the kids, how do you turn? I go, um, let me find something uh, I can hold on to. Because yeah, you never, like right? On. Exactly. I'm, I'm better off. I'll be better off with the bicycle part of yeah. it. And that's, and so is it, so, I mean, where this has started. So X Games and BMX have been around, what, 30 years now? Probably where it's been. X Games, the first X Games was 97, I believe. 95. 
95. And now yes. it's an Olympic sport, Fair right? These are seen out in my old I mean, age. As a kid, which, uh, that was what you, you wanted to be. That's what you wanted to do was just ride bikes, right? Growing up in East Texas. Yeah, so I, I saw, the first time I saw BMX was actually at the Texas State Fair. It was okay. Matt Hoffman and the Sprocket Jockeys did, did their demo at the fair in like the early 90s, like 91, 92, something like that. And I, I thought it was awesome from the moment I saw it. And I remember like, you know, drawing the ramps and the little guys and the stick figures yeah. riding the bikes and stuff. And I always thought it would be awesome to, to be a, a pro BMXer. And I do re distinctly remember when I was really young thinking I wanted to be a, uh, a professional s skier, downhill skier, like the dudes that fly, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the long jump dudes. I thought that was awesome. Um, but obviously there's no snow around here, yeah. mountains and stuff, but, but B BMX definitely took over and, and, and took, took hold better than, so you just, yeah, so you, this takes off. I mean, did you ever thought this would even become an Olympic sport, the way it's set up now? I mean, it's... No, so the Olympics definitely changed a lot in the sport. Um, not necessarily, in a, not in a bad way. Uh, there's there's pros and cons to look at it either way. I, I guess I never really thought about it being an Olympic sport at the time. It was just fun. Because I was more, you know preoccupied with just enjoying it and yeah. doing it myself and the fact that it turned into a job for me and a way to make a living was was you know something that you can't really predict because there's so many circumstances you know kids are like how do you become a pro and it's like well first of all have fun doing it do as much as you can get good at it and people will notice you you'll get sponsors try to go to events stuff like that but that's not a guarantee you're going to be, become a pro and make yeah. a living at it because there's i feel like there's there's a pretty small percentage of guys that actually make a living and don't have to have other other work outside of it so there's that but then with when you add in the olympics that kind of takes it up like 10 notches because that's like the olympics yeah. of course like that's 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 big time you know, mm -hmm. obviously X Games and Gravity Games, all that stuff is, 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 you know, big time in our, in our world. But I feel like that's like a whole nother level. And you have a lot that comes with that, both good and bad. Um, the good, obviously, exposure. So much more exposure. It's becoming more of a household, like, more people know about it and more people accept it as a sport, yeah. so to speak. And not just these, these darn kids out there doing their, their, grinding the rails and scratching up the paint and you know like yeah. that type of stuff so it definitely gets more eyes on it which grows the sport a lot more people get involved in it because they want to be olympic athletes so that's that's kind of and that's kind of like the catch-22 because now you have before it was always people that rode because they loved riding and they just did it because it was fun. And it's what we do, and and that was like our life is riding bikes. That's what you kids know? do. Yeah, and then you have the guys that kept doing it, like myself and Spencer, and like we just kept going with it, and it did turn into job for a job for us and and whatnot. But then now you have people that are getting into it not because they love the sport, but because it's an avenue to become an Olympian. Does that make sense? Yeah. So or, and you have a lot of countries that have Olympic teams that are basically putting. People, okay, your job is to learn how to ride bikes. And they're like, okay, I guess that's my job. And they're forced, they're essentially forced to do it in, in other countries, obviously, than, than the United States. But like, um, and I know, and I'm, I'm aware of all this because obviously my position in the sport, and I know a lot of the guys that have been hired to be coaches for these other countries and whatnot. And it's really awesome to see what, people can do when they're that determined because there's a whole different level of determination when your 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 job is to do this and that's how you approach it rather than this is fun I'm doing it in my spare time and it's turned into a job but I still do it for fun so yeah. it, it's just it's just different so you have guys that it's a way of life like Spencer and I and then you have people that it's a job and that's kind of like the, the con I would say to it but the flip side of that is it's still progression it's still helping the sport grow so the way I look at it, it's not bad. So it's so there's so you guys travel all over the world doing this, right? I mean, how much? Yeah. I mean, so it's just you just throw your bike. I mean, you, how do you do it? You can't just so there's, sneak, there's sneaky ways to throw do it. your bike on underneath. There's the, there's there's bit you know in the past like years and years ago, uh, you could just walk your bike and they would basically just like oh turn the handlebars so it'll pack right. You know what? what maybe take your <laughs> pegs and your pedals off something like that. That was way way gone now so now you have to like pack it into a bag and of course 
bicycles, BMX bikes, thankfully, are smaller than road bikes and yeah. mountain bikes. But you could get like the bike boxes. So you go to the, you go buy a bike box. But those are even bigger than your normal luggage. They're still the size of that TV over yeah. there. It's pretty pretty massive. And then you get charged an extra hundred dollars or hundred fifty dollars because it's a bicycle, you know, whatnot. So then we started figuring out, well, we're cheap, so we don't like to pay the extra hundred something bucks because that comes out of our own pockets. So we're like, well, how can we pack this thing down in something smaller? So you figure out, you know, tricks to, to get yeah. it on the plane. And the the big one for years and years was golf bags. You get a golf bag, you take the forks, the handlebars off, the front wheel off, and you kind of squeeze it in there, and it fits into a golf bag for you know for golf clubs. And then, of course, golf club bag is bigger than a regular bag for, for the yeah. airlines, but they allow it at the same price because it's golf uh -huh. clubs. Go they roll a red carpet out for golf players, right? Yeah. But these these ruffian BMXers and whatnot, these these kids like, oh no, they're 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 the trash, the slums. Um, so we we all show up looking exactly like we do, but with golf ba golf bags, and they're just like every now and then they'll be like, oh, where are you playing golf at? I'll be like. <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> you know, and then they're like, so are there golf clubs in here? And you're like, uh, I wasn't prepared. There's some metal, and there's then there, there's there's metal bars like, in there. That's about it. sporting equipment. <laughs> you know, and then it gets real awkward. And they're like, what's in here? And we're like, well, some, you know, parts, some sport. What kind of parts? Bike parts? Is it a whole bike? Well, I mean, my pedals are in my other bag. So no, it's not a whole bike. <laughs> you know, like, you know, so you, you end up in this real weird area and it'd be like, you get away with it, like, Five times, and then you have to you get stuck paying an extra two hundred dollars. Oh, there's a bike, two hundred dollars. You're traveling with another form of transportation, so that's a, a whatever charge. And then we figured out how to like a lot of the airlines actually have like a statement that literally says you can put a bicycle as if it fits it within the parameters, then there's no extra charge. Yeah. So I've actually I end up. Uh, do a lot of shows. We used to do a lot of shows over in the Middle East for the troops. We'd go over mm -hmm. a base and set up ramps and do shows for them. And I bought a bag on base over there in Kuwait that was like, it's like a military, like a duffel bag, duffel bag but it's got wheels on it. Mm -hmm. And it's the correct size. And if you take both wheels off and this, that, you can pack it in there and it fits perfect and no one ever asks questions. And Drive around. If, so is it like a is it a circuit? You know, like like skiing, right? Mm -hmm. For instance, they do a circuit. They're all these all over the world doing. Is that how mm -hmm. it's set up that way, or is yeah. it just more of just big competitions you go to? I mean, so you're no, there's so, a, there's definitely a circuit, um, and there's it, it it changes over the years. Like you know, in the early two thousands, there were uh, a lot of competitions that I would go to. You know, Canada and in Europe and stuff, and and even in like Australia and whatnot, and. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a circuit because you'd hit all the competitions. And now there's a, a competition called uh, Feast and like the UCI Worlds and stuff, which those are how you gain points to get into the Olympics. That's what I was going to ask about the points. So like that, I, ha I haven't really gotten involved with that, yeah. say the Olympic stuff, because um, I'm an old fart in my sport, like I was telling you. <laughs> um, but like literally like that that whole circuit run i mean oh my goodness th there's a lot of those competitions seven i i, I don't understand what five or seven five, five or seven there, there's Big quite a nation few. worldwide yeah oh yeah we're, they're all over the place um but yeah there's definitely a circuit for it and those guys are definitely traveling a lot more than i would like to at this point in my life so what do i mean i know so with baseball we play we're gone from basically february to october mm -hmm. and we have time off so what do you what does a typical one year calendar year for you look like travel wise time, so, you spend more time on the road i'm sure i spend more yeah so from from july of last summer until November 18th, I was home for probably a grand total of three weeks if you add all the days up. And two of those weeks were because I threw my back out and I had to lay flat on my back for, for two weeks and I went home <laughs> because we were up here in Dallas doing the Texas State Fair. And I was like, well, I can't ride the fair, so I'm going home. That's what Spencer said. That he was everybody, He might have to get back out there and ride. That's what you're talking about. <laughs> so Moore was one of the ones that was man down. Dude, oh, that it, it was brutal this year. But the guys that, thankfully, we picked the right crew of guys, and, and they really stepped up. And I mean, so the way the fair works, this is a little bit of sidetrack from what we're talking about, but the, we have two teams that do three shows a day each team. So there's yeah. six shows total. And we were down three guys for... 
the majority of the fair. So three dudes did six shows a day for the most of the fair, which is brutal. I mean, it's 20 minutes. Think about doing like a CrossFit workout for 20 minutes where you're just sprinting six times a day. Yeah. It ain't, it, it ain't, uh, yeah. Like, especially so at three, our age. Three yeah. is enough. Yeah. Three is enough. And the, the dudes really just kind of found their groove and got into a rhythm that worked and they just powerhouse through it, which is awesome. Oh my so. goodness. I just, has, has anything happened where you're, you know, it's like in any sport, right? You can hamstring or your back go out, but going back, go out mid trick or something where you're flying all of a sudden your body just locks up and does oh, it it sucks uh, i mean has it so how do you yeah, i mean you're it's midair and all of a sudden your body just locks up what do you do i mean what's your are you just tense up and take it <laughs> <laughs> just take it i mean i thankfully i've had uh thankfully the, the latest one when my back went out it wasn't it was more of a gradual thing it wasn't like all at once bam uh, so like I I know what trick I did that twi twisted my body and and I also know what happened leading up to that that kind of caused it but it was more of one of those things where like yeah I felt it I was like ooh that sucked and I landed and it came popped out and I was like oh man that really hurt and I was like all right but I just kind of grit my teeth and finished the show and then a few hours later when I started to cool down that's when it went Everything and I was done but. Years ago, when it was 2009, I believe, I did essentially the same thing, but it happened like all at once. And it was in a trick called a flare, which is a flip air. So think of a quarter pipe, and you, if you were to do a straight back flip yep. on a quarter pipe, you'd come down backwards. So if you do an air, you turn 180 and come down forward. So you do a flip with a 180, yeah. it's a flare. And I was doing that trick, and the way I do that trick is I basically drop my shoulder and lean to the side, but it contorts your body sideways a little bit, and my lower back said, no, we're not having that. So I, as soon as I took off, I was like, yeah, and I l finished the rotation, landed, and I was like, ah, and I just rode across the ramp and flew out on the other side and jumped off my bike and was on my hands and knees and couldn't move. <laughs> and I was just like, ah, this sucks, I can't move, I'm back out, and like the guys, I couldn't even lay down. I, I was stuck. Oh. I couldn't lay down. I couldn't get up. I was just like, I, I can't do anything. And uh, they had to literally like put their arms under my chest so I could move my arms. And then they lowered me down onto my chest and then ended up going to the hospital. And then I, I asked, uh, I made the mistake of asking the ER doctor how much it was going to cost. <laughs> and at that moment, he was like, I hate you. And he was just like, treated me like trash. And I got, I walked out, which was excruciating also. And they still charged me like a thousand dollars, and they didn't do anything for me. So, good on you. What was that, Columbus? Not Columbus. It was Cleveland, Ohio, ER, somewhere up there. Yeah, it was. Yeah, a good time. Oh my goodness. So, so going through this, I'm sure you've seen some gnarly, gnarly injuries, right? Some bad, mm -hmm. bad. Stuff. Anything? What's the worst that's happened to you? To me, I, I ruptured my spleen, broke my uh, scaphoid, scaphoid, however you want to pronounce it, the, the little bone yeah. in your wrist that doesn't heal. Yeah. Because there's no, like no blood flow, broke that, broke two ribs and ruptured my spleen uh, in one crash, in Brazil, Sao Paulo, Brazil of all places. Great place to get internal bleeding. What happened? Uh, it was a mega ramp event, so big big quarter pipe. Um, I was doing practice all week for it while we were there, and I was basically, I kind of have like a method when I do those competitions. Like, so I don't get to practice that ramp because I don't have one in my yard. Like you asked about that yeah. earlier. Uh, I get to ride that ramp at the event, basically. That's your and that's your training, then. You get a week a year, basically, or <laughs> however many contests there are. And it, dude, it's so much fun, though. Yeah. But it's just like, yeah, just I mean, the tricks come naturally. It's the the height above the ramp that's abnormal or unnatural, which you have to get used to, and you have like you know three four days to figure it out. So I always spend those three four days where I just don't really do tricks. I just fly, and I was getting a comfortable landing, dragging a little bit of brakes because I had brakes, dragging a little bit of brakes down the landing of the, the straight jump so I'd go slower into the quarter pipe so I wouldn't go quite as high. But come competition time, I'm like, no, 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 I got to go high. So I was used to doing my tricks at one height over like the, yeah. the four days of practice. And then come competition time, I was like, no, nah, no, nah, we're white knuckling this thing. We're just going to land and pump and go as fast as we can. So I went like five feet higher than I've been going all week, but it changes things a little bit. Yeah. Because the speed and, and the problem was when I took off, uh, there's a very, there's two feet of vert on this ramp. So vertical yeah. ramp. You have a 25 foot radius transition. Yeah. And then you have two feet of 
straight vertical, and then there's coping at the top, yeah. which is the usually little. a little bump. It's the metal across the top, and it's usually a little bump. So when you're going off of it, you'll feel it bump as you ride off of it. And of course, you know, 60 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour, whatever it is, it's like, you, it, yes. it's like right there. But you have to be ready for it, which is where the practice comes in. And you almost have to like push in a little bit. So, cause if you're leaning out, you start going away yeah. from the ramp and the higher you go, you go out and then you come down, you keep going out and it just, it compounds and it gets scary. Uh, it gets ugly really quickly. And if you want to see what that looks like, just Google Jake Brown, mega ramp crash like he's probably he got famous he got on jay leno because of this crash at x games where he literally hit and popped and went out like 19 feet above coping so he's yeah. like 50 feet off the ground and he landed on the flat bottom and Ooh. broke a four by four with his body in the flat bottom i think i've ever seen that video. he was fine though he got up and walked off he sprained his wrist Something like that, dude. The dude literally probably had so much THC in his body that he's Gumby. But like, <laughs> Jake's awesome. Jake's one of my favorite humans. But I, I, I was terrified. I watched it happen. I thought he was dead. But, I, but so, thankfully, he was fine. Um, but it can get ugly really fast. And part of the problem is, so you want to push forward a little bit so you don't go out like Jake did, which I have done. Not that bad, but I have done that a handful of times. So I know the consequences. And I pushed too much forward, and I went over the deck. Oh! So you've got like that ramp, and then you've got the flat deck yeah, on that's top. What and I wondering. pushed yeah. out over the deck, and I knew it as soon as I took off. But I had already started the trick that I was doing, and the bike's spinning around, and I was just like, "Okay, now I got I got to figure this out." Because I knew I was over the deck, and it was bad bad news bears. Because you don't want to land on the deck. Because there's a whole other slew of problems that can happen with that, obviously. There's riders I mean, sitting there, right? Think, th no, there's nothing up on, on the oh, top. They have a pad up there that's like this big. Oh, okay. But it doesn't really do much. Yeah. Uh, it just, you know, looks like they're doing something, I guess you could say. But, uh, yeah, no, it's cleared off for the competition. Oh, okay. But literally, I mean, think about jumping off of like a two-story roof and landing on flat ground. Like, that's not going to feel good. So you don't want to, especially with a bike that's doing whatever and... It, so I was like, okay, I have a choice to make here. And I had time to think about it, too, because you're in the air long enough. I, I distinctly remember thinking about this in the air and being like, okay, I have to make a choice here. I can toss the bike. And if you throw the bike, you can propel your body a little bit. You can kind of use that to, the moment, yeah, to, push, to push your body. And the idea is I don't, ca I mean, I don't care about the bike. I get bikes for free. Yeah. So let the bike get destroyed. It's fine. So I was like, okay, I can throw my bike and try to slide, you know, just to eke in and slide down the ramp like like a big, you know, gap to, to giant slide. Um, or I can hang on and let and try to let the bike take the brunt of hitting the deck and 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 see what happens there. My issue with throwing the bike was if I don't make my body in, then it's like jumping off a two story building and landing sitting on a metal pipe fence yeah. on that edge which is not good for your back, right? So th there's all kinds of problems that can happen there too. So I was like, okay, well, I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to literally catch the bike and just extend and let the bike take it. Because I was, I was what we call a sprocket case. So I was like, my sprocket hit the edge. Yeah. Front wheel was in, back wheel was all on the deck. Sprocket was on the deck. And I was like, I'm just going to let the bike take it. Hopefully the bike crumbles and I can just kind of fall off and slide down. And what ended up happening was when I hit the coping... Uh, my wrist, the, the handlebars pushed into my wrist. That's what broke my yeah. wrist. So that broke my wrist, but then the bars actually flung down, which propels you over the bars. Onto the ramp, right? Down to the bottom oh. of the ramp. So I actually got pitched and I landed, I mean, 18 feet down the 30 foot ramp. So, or maybe a little bit farther than that even. I caught some tranny, but when I landed, I hit my elbow. My elbow pushed in on my ribs, two ribs broke, and that pushed in on my spleen and my spleen went and spleens bleed a lot. Did it bend the, the frame of the bike? Did it bend at all? Did, did anything? I, have, I don't remember. You don't have the bike? I, you just I hit? I honestly don't remember. It might have. Were you there, Spencer? No, you almost knows? died, though. So. Yeah, yeah no, it, was, it, was, it was bad. I actually thought, so there's a video of this, too. Like, you can you can Google Morgan Wade Mega Ramp Mistake. A, a, a guy from like uh, you know Portuguese yeah. like they the, the translation came out it's pretty funny I think but oh mega ramp mistake but if you Google that you'll find it and it's it the crash doesn't look that bad but you'll see the the trick and then I get pitched down to the bottom and I knock the wind out of myself pretty good so I'm laying on the ground and of course the guy in the on the 
the microphone, the announcer, he's like, oh, are you okay? And I did like a thumbs up. Just get the oh, wind so you back. were aware, yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> so like, the trick to getting your wind back, I don't know if you've ever had the wind knocked out oh, a little yeah. bad, but right. we do it enough that there's a trick to get the air back faster. You lay flat on your back, put your knees up, put your arms up, and it opens your rib cage and you can get a breath, right? So I did that and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm good. And I get up and the medics came out and kind of walked me off. And I grabbed my bike and started to go back up for another run. <laughs> and, uh, my buddy Chris, who's who was the, the medic there, he uh, he was like, no, no, why don't you come over and let me check you out? I was like, okay, that sounds reasonable. So I go over and, and I sit down. He goes, have a seat. So I sit down like on just like a step, the concrete step of the stands there. And when I sat down, I bent forward. I was like, oh gosh, because my yeah. my torso then compressed, compressed a little bit. Ribs and, and I was like, this something's wrong here. Like this is bad news. And I tried to get up, so I put my hand down and I was like something's wrong there. That's how I found out my wrist yeah. was broken. I was like, okay, that's not good. So I got up on this side. We went inside the medical room. I laid down and he pushed on my, up under my ribs. Ooh. Oh. And, and it, I, I just started screaming because I was like, my arm is being torn off. It feels like your arm yeah. is being ripped off. And he was like, that's your spleen. I was like, what? <laughs> He's like, so it's like referred or deferred pain. It, the nerve apparently for your spleen originates up behind your shoulder blade so when you hurt your spleen your arm feels like it's being torn off and ima imagine having your arm a rope tied to your yeah. arm tied to a horse and your body's stuck and a horse is pulling your arm off like you know the medieval time that's the best way i can describe what i thought was happening it felt like my arm was being ripped off my body so you're being quartered and i was like oh gosh like yeah it, bad and he was like that's your spleen it's the nerve this that he explained it real quick and i was like crap he goes you're going to the hospital we got it probably gonna have to do surgery like right now. This is, this is bad. And I'm like, oh, okay, this sucks. So then like, he was like, he went back out and, uh, the guys came in to get me into a wheelchair to take me to the ambulance to go to the hospital. And I was, by this time I started sweating like a lot and I started turning pale. They said I turned like pale, like a, a sheet of white paper and was sweating bullets. And I passed out from blood loss, right? Pretty much right then when they came in to get me. And when I came back to, I was on the floor, laying flat on my back on the floor, because apparently it happened as they were putting me in the chair, and I fell out of the chair. And Chris, the trainer, he was back with the medic. He was back in the room, which they had to go get him and come back. So that's how long I was out. And he's holding my face. So I'm like, okay, you were outside, so I was out for a minute. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'm coming back too. All right, cool. He got me into the ambulance, went to the hospital, and course find out i have my spleen messed up and the doctor speaks broken english and he's like yay they did like the cat scan or whatever they the body scan and uh he's like your spleen is 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 bleeding it's ruptured uh it's pretty bad we have to do surgery probably remove it and i was like oh gosh i have a lot of friends that don't have their spleens and it's like kind of messes with your immune system and there's a lot of issues that come with that and I was like, oh, can you fix it? Literally, this is the conversation. I said, can you fix it? BM, grimy BMXer, not an athlete. Junk food, right? I'm like, can you fix it? And he goes, I'll try. And I was like, good enough for me. Let's go. And uh, so we go into surgery, and I, they knock me out. I wake up from surgery, and he, I see the doctor and a couple nurses hanging over. And he's just like, I fixed it. And he gave me a thumbs up, and I high-fived him. I was like, yeah, I high-fived him. And then I was in ICU for three days four days and then the hospital for another four or five days and then i was in my hotel room for another five days because you can't fly for however long after and then i was finally able to to get home but they actually yeah they put like uh some kind of like he said it was a protein they get from cows to force a blood clot that they sprayed on 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 the the laceration in my spleen that forced because your spleen is so vascular it just bleeds and yeah. bleeds and bleeds and that's why it's dangerous so a lot of times they take it out to stop the bleeding because they can clamp it the source and obviously you don't have to have a spleen to survive but it's it's good to have everything that you were you know you came with <laughs> um but he, he yeah they put this stuff on there and it forced a blood clot because the blood's flowing so fast it, it forced that blood clot and it heals like your tongue like super yeah. fast because it's so vascular Unlike the little bone in your wrist, it gets no blood that takes a year and some change to feel normal. But um, yeah, they fixed it. And a lot of times in America, they won't do that surgery to fix it because your your spleen is enlarged from the trauma afterwards and you're at risk of re-rupturing it if you bend wrong, move wrong. Like I have a buddy that had that happen and his German Shepherd jumped in his lap and stepped on him and re-ruptured his spleen. <laughs> 
right? Right back to surgery. Yeah. So in America, you've got everyone's so happy. So you get surgery, and then something happens, and it re-ruptures. Oh, the doctor didn't do his job right, so I'm going to sue the doctor for not fixing me right because it re-ruptured. So they just take them out here because they don't want the liability. So that's the, the great you know medical system that involves So money, that's why a lot right? of people go to South America to have, some, have all this stuff done, right? Yeah, people come to America to get legit stuff done because America has the best yeah. health care on, on earth. It's just all of the insurance and the money that's involved just muddies the waters like crazy. But down there, thankfully, they were able to fix, fix me, and, and I was real careful not to do anything stupid, and it, and it healed up fine. So I still got it. Good to go. That's my worst injury. Oof, man, that's just. I, <laughs> uh, I've I, had plenty of other ones, but that. I know one, that's that what I'm saying. What you see, what you guys have seen, and and you know, that's I've, usually I've what they seen, show I've on seen, highlights. I've of. seen worse ones. I've seen worse ones, which I don't ever want to see my friends get hurt. No, you I don't. Have, it's, but it's it's yeah. That's part of the risk, but and I know nowadays, right? Bigger creates more fan, right? More people want to see, so guys are going bigger at the risk of. You know, even more bodily injury, is it? Yeah, and honestly, like, it's dangerous to walk down the street. Yeah. Walk down the side rock. It, the, the, so Matt Hoffman, are you familiar with Matt mm -hmm. Hoffman? Matt Hoffman is like the godfather of BMX. He invented most of the tricks that we all do on quarter pipes, and, like, he's literally, like... He's a Tony Hawk of BMX, right? Un yeah. Okay. Unreal yeah. BMXer. He's had so many injuries. Literally from riding his bike, he's gotten beat up so bad. The worst injuries he's had are from driving cars. Other people yeah. running lights and crashing yeah. into him or on their phones and rear-ending him. Like, literally, he, he will say straight up, the most dangerous thing I've ever done in my life is get in a car, an automobile, and drive on the streets. And this dude base jumps and does all kinds of th stuff that normal people, normal people would think he's absolutely insane for doing. And for him, he's just an adrenaline junkie, so he just wants more. He wants more, he wants more. And he's very talented at everything he does. And literally, you'd think all this other stuff he does is what's dangerous, but no, it's actually getting in the dang car that that has caused him his worst injuries. I mean, it's it's a meant. It seems to be a mentality for your just. I think for a lot of yeah. a lot of athletes, depending on what sport it is, right? Football, yeah. for instance, right? I mean, those guys run through brick walls. They don't really. Baseball, a little bit different. Hockey, I mean. It, it's all different. Same with, it's, yeah. like you said, the adrenaline stuff. Some people are, mm -hmm. me, I'd rather have both feet on the ground. There's no way I'm jumping out of a plane <laughs> or anything else. If I'm riding a bike, I, I even even just standing on a 10-foot ramp looking down, I'm like, there's no way. I'm, I wouldn't even, I don't know if I want to slide down the ramp just because. But it, you're right, everybody's looking for that next kind of like kind of fix, right? Is that mm -hmm. what it is? That's yeah. what they're looking for. So Yeah, it's a, it's a natural high. Yep. Yeah, and Which, it's, I mean, it's I wouldn't mind jumping thing. into, a, like, a lake. You see some of those guys doing that stuff. What was the what was the movie we had growing up? Rad. Oh, yeah. Remember Rad growing yeah. up? Let's go ass sliding. Yes, that was <laughs> awesome. That, when you were talking about the movie last night, when you were talking about 80s movie, that was oh, the first thing came to Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You gotta watch that movie, dude. What's it called? It's Hell Comes to Frogtown. Hell Comes to Frogtown. This Frog is like Town. grade C, cheesiest. Like I'm gonna have saying, to watch this. Oh I my saw the, gosh, I watched it's the trailer. So bad. Rowdy it's, Rowdy it's, Piper's it's, in it. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yes, he's in it. Oh my. It's epic. It's it's apocalypse. Movie night, Spencer's it's, house. It's, oh gosh. <laughs> the apocalypse. All men are sterile except for Rowdy Rowdy Piper. That is. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, that's just, just, yeah. It looks like a. And when Find you were the trailer. About that, yes. And you sent that to me last night. I just, I was, <laughs> that was all. And it's, but it's even a cheesy a voiceover for the whole movie itself. Oh, yeah. It's just, yeah. but that's, that's the stuff we grew up with. The, the stupid stuff that was, that was fun. But like you said, Rad was, was the, yeah. was the movie mm -hmm. growing up, right? These guys, this was awesome. Everybody wanted to ride. That's what I want to do. Oh, I have an autograph Crew Jones picture do on you? the wall of the house. Was oh, yeah. that like early 80s? Bill, Bill Allen. or something? Bill Allen. 80. Was it? Google it. Find out. I wasn't born. You weren't. Shut I up, Spencer. Like 80, I, I want to. But say, that was. Just, I want to say 86, but I could be. It might. Be but right, I wonder how many you might people be right, that. Actually. Oh, well, look at me go. Look at you. See. BMX trivia. What's I up? wonder how many that guys that actually, kind of got into the sport because it was Ton, one of those. Ton, from that movie. Yeah. Tons. But the, tons. Actually, the first time I met Bill Allen, who's the actor that plays yeah. Crew Jones in the movie Rad. Uh, he had a whole, it was at uh, Interbike, which is a big bike convention for all kinds of bikes it's in Vegas. That It's, you know, the Sands Expo is full of just all yeah. kinds of bikes. And he's in the BMX area signing autographs. And I was like, oh, nice, Crew Jones. So I got in line and I got an autograph picture from him. And he's like, let me guess, 
I got you into BMX. And I was like, no, actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he's so used to hearing that, yeah. you know? I was like, yeah, I Here's saw the picture. movie, but that's like not what got me. Matt Hoffman got me into BMX, not, not the movie Rad, but the movie Rad is Rad, because of what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but they weren't doing the stupid, the, not so much stupid stuff, but the insane stuff. So who is, would be the godfather of the insanity of just started the, because Matt Hoffman was, you said the BMX stuff, but he, did he start doing the big jumps, the big air yeah. type stuff? So he was the guy. Matt he Hoffman, was the Look up the birth of big air. I believe it's on Disney plus right now. Okay. But uh, it's a 30 for 30, ESPN 30 for 30. Birth I think of big I do air. remember. Okay. It's awesome. And it's about Hoffman Starting the big air thing, basically. He was the first to do it. He built a 20-foot quarter pipe at his warehouse in Oklahoma City or Edmond uh, and got towed in by a dirt bike to hit it. And he went like 21, 22, 25 out of that. Was it 25 out of that one? That was like 91, I think. He was the first to do it. And then... Uh, um, Danny Way actually is in that documentary talking about he saw Hoffman doing that, and that's kind of what gave him the idea for the big quarter pipe airs. And he added the, the roll the jump to quarter and, and kind of put the, the mega ramp together. So that was like Danny's contribution. And Danny's amazing too, like on the skate side for, for you know, going big as far as that stuff goes. He was the pioneer for the skateboards in that. Good. I just, the mentality of just of of jumping into that of that stuff of just seeing it and want you know it, it it's just I think it's just any athlete it's mm -hmm. just you, you you get focused on what you want to do and that's it right I'm gonna do what I need to do to and it's I mean it's a fairly very inexpensive sport correct I mean it's a bike and you go ride and then is there hey, and then as you and so BMX one of the downfalls of BMX for uh, new getting new people into it is the cost. Cause like when you co contrast it to like skateboarding, you can go to the mall and get a skateboard for 45, 50 bucks, something like that. And you can, you can mall grab it all day long, hold it by the trucks and walk around and act like you're a skateboarder and you can roll around on it, whatnot. And it's relatively inexpensive. A bike, an entry level bike, you're looking at like $300, $400 for and a baseline entry level, something that if you actually progress you will break most of the parts in this because they're not yeah. built to hold up the same as the stuff that we ride my bike right now if i were to buy all the parts that are on my bike it's probably 2500 bucks maybe so it's like i piece together everything that i want on my bike yeah. a lot of the stuff i get from the companies that make it because i know a lot of the guys and i have connections and whatnot or sponsors um but if i were to go out and buy those parts for the bike that I actually ride right now, you're looking at probably you know, two thousand to two thousand five hundred dollars for that. And a lot of the bikes that are even that we were talking about earlier, the weight meanie guys, the super lightweight stuff, the titanium stuff, those things, those bikes can go way higher than that. I mean, what the the tie frames uh, are like two thousand dollars just for the frame alone, for a whole titanium frame. Those are the lightweight. Very I mean, lightweight. Very, I, I wouldn't do it. But, like, I also weigh 230 pounds, and I would probably do detrimental damage to the, the see, inter I, structural integrity of that frame. <laughs> see, I couldn't ride a bike unless it had a tractor seat on it. I just, yeah. you got to have a, what's so funny, Spencer? <laughs> right? I just couldn't. I, it just doesn't feel comfortable riding around. I mean, you don't, it's not, you don't sit on the seat uh, no. no, so I mean, it's no, one of those that's, where that's one of the things that, like, <laughs> what I was just talking about the mall grab, yeah. with, like skateboarders. Yeah. Like, when you see someone hold their skateboard by the trucks, you know they don't, they're not a skater. Yeah. Because, like, oh, mall grab, that's why it's called a mall grab, because you're the dude that goes and hangs out at the mall and tries to look cool. So it's like someone that just is always sitting on their seat when they're riding around, that's kind of like the, the equivalent of a mall grab for a bike. You're just like, yeah, you don't sit on the seat when you're riding. Like, those aren't for comfort. Like what we have is is there so that you don't have like a spike to, yeah. to get you. It's there for safety more than anything. Work. And yeah, you know, we do sit on it from time to time. If you're if you're actually going to ride across town or whatever, you're out street riding or whatever, then of course you're going to sit down. Or in between runs, you're going to sit down. But when you're actually riding, now there are very few tricks that involve actually sitting down. And those tricks are usually the ones that are kind of more like the the funny tricks that are just goofy. I just no. Michael Laren loves the sit down jumps. Speaking of goofy, you should explain to Kevin your love for baseball. Baseball, yeah, baseball is pretty awesome. I, I, I've never really been into like major mainstream sports yeah. that much. Like, of course, like I had baseball cards growing up and stuff, and like, uh, but 
I didn't really fully understand how fun it is to go to a baseball game until I went because I learned about heckling. <laughs> they don't do it in, they don't do it in your sport. There's just too much. Oh, there is. Yeah, uh, there is. But it's it's different. It's so different cuz like yeah, I mean, it's the same, the same but different. But I I freaking love it. It's so much fun to sit there and just be like just I mean, and my favorite my go-to is just the swing batter batter, you know, swing batter 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 swing batter. <laughs> you know the Ferris Bueller's day off. Yeah. And like oh gosh, the the, one of the, this guy, Darren Lasort, is a, a friend from up here that I went to a game with, and he showed me the ways. He has a voice that carries. He has a mouth that's like this big, right? <laughs> and he, we were up like halfway up on on the bottom, uh, not up in the in the, the upper deck or anything like that. We we're like halfway up, and he, I forget who who we were playing. I've only ever gone to Ranger games. I haven't ever been to any games other than Ranger games just yeah. because there's a giant Texas flag on my back. That's yeah. self explanatory, but. Literally, he screamed at one of the guys on second. He was on second base, the other the other team, and literally, it just ha it was so perfect. Everything was quiet. No one. It was just quiet. There was no PA noise. This, that, whatever. The crowd happened to be quiet, and he just straight up was like, "Hey!" And he he said the guy's name. He was ah, so and so. And he just like, "You couldn't catch the." He just like let him have it, and the dude was like, "We saw him." Oh, look. We were like, "Oh my gosh, he heard." Like, that was the best thing ever. And of course, we were dying laughing because it was the perfect timing. And I was like, I must learn the ways. So then uh, fast forward a, a couple games, and I ended up l two seats up behind uh, home plate. And we were right behind, like, the warm-up. Yeah, the batter's down deck circle. And, of course, it was when the Dodgers, the Dodgers were there playing, and Puig was, yeah. <laughs> was warming up. And I'm literally like... 15 feet away from the guy oh, and, yeah. and he's he's warming up swinging and I'm just like swing bat 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 swing bat and of course I'm right there so you can hear it and he starts doing this thing where he's like he's like swinging he's like and he like looks at me in like eye contact when he when he comes around he's like <laughs> makes eye contact so I kept, I was like ooh I like this so, so I kept doing it you know and and every time he would make eye contact with me and I was just like yeah we're getting somewhere you know <laughs> and of course everybody around me is heckling too cuz that's what you do and you yeah and uh he goes up there and man it was one of those things like I mean obviously he's an amazing batter and like he just struck out and like it happened I think two times in that game I can't remember I can't remember I actually found an article on it uh Last night, because I was thinking about, I was trying to think about it. This is in 2016, and uh, he actually struck out, and I'm sc I'm screwed the uh. whole time, the whole time. <laughs> and of course, every time he misses, I'm like, yeah, freaking out. And he's looking at me the whole dude, and he was already like annoyed because he wasn't hitting. And then he strikes out, and he just turns and he breaks the bat over his knee. And then he walks in the dugout and he throws the bat into the dugout. He breaks one of the lights out in the dugout. And one of my buddies was actually watching, and he was like. I texted him. I was like, oh, did you see that? He broke the lights, whatever. And he was like, I just watched that. I was like, I was heckling him so hard. I was like, was swing was and was He me. was like, I heard you. I heard you heckling on the TV. And I was like, this is the best day of my life. It was, it was a good time. And then I found actually a video of him breaking the bat on his leg. And I paused it. And I can see me and my wife sitting in, in the oh. stands. Right I'll show you. It's It's epic. <laughs> Is it? I was I was very proud of myself. So it's what used to what you're hearing then. Is that what people can say? Because they're not very close when you're doing this stuff, are they? I mean, what do you hear? Go, so, it's not like break a leg or something. Is it? I mean, the other riders are saying more oh, so. Yeah. It's, more so, it's the other riders, and it's not ah. it's not the crowd heckling in, in our sports so much as it's the other the peer, your peers. They're giving you crap yeah. for, uh, you know, like big it, brother, little brother type stuff. For right? your foot not landing on the pedal and it's sideways or you slipped or whatever. And there's like, oh, good one. Or, yeah. you know, you case the ramp when you come in, you just barely tag your back wheel on the top yeah. of the ramp. It's like, did you get a lawyer for that case? Oh, I didn't know you worked at Taco Bell. Hand out <laughs> quesadillas. So, like, you know, stuff like that. And we were doing, uh, actually, at the Texas State Fair this past, this last year, we had, uh, there's a group of guys that I do uh, high school shows with high school tour with for the Marines where we go around and do anti-bullying speeches and stuff and, and show off our stunts on the bikes. But, uh, they were in town and they came to the show and the whole time they were just like, 
calling out. They, they were they were doing the full heckle because they're like I said, yeah. it's their friends, but they're in the crowd and the crowd doesn't know this, so they're out there just like, oh yeah, do a foop and you. They're like calling tricks that we don't normally do in shows, so we're just like doing these stupid tricks. And one of them said, do an ET, which is where you just jump and you pedal, right? <laughs> ET. And like, so I literally, was like, I haven't done an ET in years. And I, like, he said it while I was riding and I heard him. So I was like, all right. So I hit the jump and I tried to do it. My feet got stuck and I got awkward. I was like, oh my gosh. And I almost crashed <laughs> so hard doing one of the dumbest tricks ever. But I did get, I came back around and pulled it the second, the second go. But same, that, that that's more so the stuff. So it's, it's definitely different. Because it's not the crowd doing it so much as it is your friends doing it. Okay, yeah, because we did it in the dugout. The guys will do it. I'm pretty sure yeah. Puig was pretty mad at me. Oh yeah, some <laughs> some guys can. They're in Tampa in, before in, before they were actually good like they are now. It was yeah. it's a giant gymnasium, so they have five thousand fans. There was one and one guy sit behind on plate. He would sit there with his daughter and he'd pick one player out of series. Oh, and Nick, you could hear him the entire. He'd yeah. pick it out. He'd. Be out, Man, you suck, and and, and, it, and it just basically dead silent, right? You're just standing there, and he knew exactly yeah. what it was. And he picked it, and you could hear him on TV too. People, oh, were, yeah. oh yeah. yeah, and it's now I never do the personal insults, but my 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 go to is the swing batter batter. But like other than that, like yeah, it's it's fun. It's a you got to experience. You got to go sit in some of these other like Wrigley. Go sit in the outfield of Wrigley and hear some of the stuff when they're playing. <laughs> oh, but it's brutal. brutal. Oh, it it's is. Brutal. Oh, it is. They've they've got some creative stuff that to, to, that they come up with to yeah. do. I mean, they actually do a lot of homework. I mean, they know yeah. your family history type stuff. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They they definitely do a lot of homework on that side. I, side I always said it was side gig. It was a hundred years of animosity built up. They hadn't won a World Series when I was when I was playing at that point. So I mean, they were really. Yeah. It's fun. I mean, you you take it and you have fun with it. But yeah. granted, there are times too where you, people take it a little too far right we're yeah. we're all running for a ball in the towards the bleachers and everybody's just screaming at and we're trying to communicate and somebody could get hurt so we've done that made a play over there and just yelled at people for hey, hey, really we're being stupid or something right that type of stuff but i'm like you know you don't your yeah. your fans aren't down there saying hey you know you so you so more i hope you fall blah 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 yeah I'm sure no, you, that's well they, they do this they what school shows Oh, at school shows? Uh, yeah, that's, that's like, that, yeah, that's different. That's different. High schoolers are just too cool for school. So Yeah. Sometimes. We have a good time, though. The shows are fun. Like, I enjoy doing shows. Yeah, so you've got your little one over here. Yeah. Mr. Carter, he is good. Is he, has he been riding yet? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, had, he, we were at the skate park yesterday, actually. What's his, what's, what's his thing, though? Is he like, is he like bikes, or is he oh, like yeah, skateboards? Yeah, he's just, bikes. He, he's got a little scooter, too, but he likes, his, he likes his bike the most. Carter, you want to come sit over here, Daddy? You want to come over here? He's like, nah. No, I don't want to come over here. Nah. You like riding bikes, Connor? Yeah. He's a fan of just nodding his head. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're going to see yourself on TV. Hey, maybe one day. This, hey, this could be your trial run, Connor, of being on TV. See what you look like. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he came in here earlier and he, he tried that. I was like, mm, yeah. Yeah. During the headlines. I'm doing that. <laughs> so he'll be starting kindergarten this year? Next he's, year? He's already in his third year. We're homeschooling him. Oh, okay. So he's already three years deep. Yeah. Yeah. What's with why why the homeschool? Just because traveling so much? Um, I mean that's probably uh, that would be a minuscule part of it, but like uh, mostly just because we don't trust the the current school system. As far as the education process, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. the stuff the that kids, the, the, the stuff that kids are exposed to these days, stuff like that. We just we're we're, we're not not down with a lot of the things that they're that they're pushing in, in the uh, the school system. Public and private. Yeah. So you're Tyler. I and my Ty my wife is. Uh, she teaches anatomy and physiology yeah. at the, the a college. Yeah. In our area, and uh, so she loves teaching. She's very good at teaching, and she's from the day that we had him, she's been looking forward to teaching him. So that's that's a huge part of it as well. So, so there's yeah. a lot of reasons. A lot of, yeah. lot of reasons, but but uh, yeah, it's great. He's he's extremely smart. So it, your yeah. ISD is you know the big thing now is is. Right, the teachers being armed in schools, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. a big, yeah. is a big thing. Now, I know it was big where I am in Keller. You know, they talking about it where you are. They've already been allowed to, correct? Yeah, it's been a few years now. Uh, they passed. Uh, the I, I'm law? more, I'm more familiar with like the college stuff because my wife yeah. works at the, at the college uh, than I am with the other stuff. Because obviously, we don't have any kiddos in in the public yep. system at ISD, but. Um, but yeah, uh, she was actually on the committee when they were coming up with the rules and, and whatnot for, for Tyler Junior College when they were going through all that. 
So the teachers in the colleges are allowed too, as well, as yep. far as? I wasn't sure if it was just the, just the schools or whatnot. So that was a big thing in, in Keller where we are of the, uh, the Guardian why, program. Why would, you, why would you, I mean, we guard our money with guns. Why wouldn't we guard the most precious things we have, our children with guns? Like a, a no gun sign or a gun-free zone, all that does is tell just someone like that wants to zone, shoot it up. So it's like, hey, no one's going to shoot back. Yeah. Why wouldn't we protect our children the same way we do our money? Like it's it's absurd when you come to think like that, but it just all boils down to money and power, and people can't control people that are armed, right? So no, there's uh, there's a school in Florida I saw there. One of the uh, SRO carries an, an AR to school, and mm -hmm. the kids love it. They see them all the time. They're high fiving them and everything else. It just so it's, it's a comfort. I mean, if the kids are comfortable, way, and, and here here's the, the the main thing. A lot of people are really scared of guns because they have no experience with the guns outside of the bad things they hear and see or maybe they had a bad experience somewhere down the line. Like my wife, for example, she's from Arizona and her experience with guns before she moved to Texas were all bad stuff. It was all like her, fr her friends getting robbed, mugged, murdered. A lot of bad stuff happens, obviously, especially that close to the border. But like her experiences were all negative, bad experiences. She never experienced or even heard of the positive stuff that can come from someone carrying a gun for self-defense for themselves or other family or others even, which obviously, as you and I know, the benefits far outweigh the negatives of good law-abiding citizens being able to protect themselves mm -hmm. and their communities. Um, you know, if, if a bad guy's gonna get a gun, whether you tell him you can have it or not. Last I checked, it, it's illegal to murder somebody with uh, a stick or a pencil or a knife yep. or a gun, it doesn't matter what you use, it's illegal. So if you tell someone it's illegal to murder somebody and they're gonna do that obviously, what's gonna stop them from getting a gun when you say you're not allowed to have a gun? And we ain't, let's just be frank, we're not gonna get rid of the guns. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna go away, they're here. There's like, what was it like, six or seven guns per person in the United States? That's how many guns are here. Yep. You can't get rid of that, I mean, so. No, and it's and I'm sure I could it, go on for days. Oh, but, I know. but my original point was people's experience with 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 guns, and the more familiar you are with them from a younger age, the more it's not really a big deal. Like I personally don't remember not knowing how to handle a firearm safely. My father drilled the four rules of gun safety into me from the time I was tiny, younger than him. Yeah, and. Uh, I, like, I don't remember not knowing how to handle a gun safely. And he's the same way. When he was one year old, he had a little, I had a little, uh, it was a USB from, uh, from a, a gun company that had, uh, I got it at SHOT Show, a big gun convention, that had all the information on some of their firearms, but it was a little plastic, a rubber gun mm -hmm. that you'd pull the end of it off, and it was a USB drive that had all their info on it, right? So, but there's this little, it looked like a little toy, and he, of course, got a hold of it when he was one year old. Wasn't even, like, talking yeah. yet. And I'd already like been like, oh, we, anytime we pick up a firearm, we always check, check it, know the condition of your firearm, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'd show him how to like, you know, you pull the slide back. And, and obviously I have firearms. Anything that was within his reach, of course, is not loaded just to avoid an accident. Mm -hmm. But anytime he ever wanted to see it, I would let him see it to get the mystery. So, yeah. th so he's not like, ooh, what's that? I'm not allowed to see that. When dad's not here, I'm gonna go check it out. Get rid of that. All together, like he literally sees a gun and he's just like, yeah, it's a gun, whatever. That's everyday life mm -hmm. because he's used to it. He's been around it. He's familiar with it. And there's not negative associated with that because he's learned the safety behind it. But when he was one, he had this little little gun and I was so proud. I was like, oh, he, he picked it up, right? And I was like, how do we check it? And he pulls the little thing, <laughs> the, like just a part, of, not the whole way, just a, a part a little bit that, that yeah. uncovers the USB. He's like, pulls it open and then shuts it. And I was like, yes, he gets it. So like, he, And that's the thing, it's right. Guns don't kill people. Stupid people with guns kill people. Exactly. Right? And it's, exactly. And I, it's, the, it's a thing where um, the kids, it's just a matter of, like you said, they're around them enough to know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is, this is, we're just scratching the surface on where this is going to go. So, I mean, it's. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see how it goes, how it, and you know what people think, and, and yeah. where we go from here. So a lot of people are pulling well, out. We, of we already know how we already know how it's going to go. The more uh, places that are protected by guns, by good, good people that yeah. know how to pro are proficient and know how to use them safely, and 
those places don't get shot up the same as other places do. I mean, look at Aurora, Colorado. Those movie theaters, like between that guy's apartment and the movie theater that he shot up, there were, I think, eight, seven or eight other theaters between there. Yeah. You want to know what the one difference is between the theater he shot up and all the ones between his? They this was the only one that had a no gun sign on it. He went where he wasn't going to get yeah. any any feedback. Yeah. He, yeah. he where he had the least likely the least uh, possibility of someone shooting him back. Yeah. He went somewhere where it was they were defenseless. Yeah. And it's like it's no different from our schools and stuff. That's why we need to have people that are trained, that are proficient that are safe in these schools, like you're saying, the, the, the guy with the, with the AR, all the kids are high five and stuff, they, they're, they're comfortable being there because they, he, they know he's safe. He's there. Yep. They know he's there. They know that he is protecting them. He's watching out for them, and he wants their safety over his own even. Yep. They know that, and it's, it's comforting, like you were saying. Yep. I mean, so it'll be yeah. interesting, though. We definitely have to revisit this just to see where you know where it goes in yeah. the next in the next you know few years or how these schools are going to handle it, right? Because yeah. it's only going to get you know it's just going to get it's going to get worse as far as just more and more stupid out there, mm -hmm. right? Until there's more mm -hmm. education and just being around it and understanding it. So yeah, um, but I appreciate you coming on today, sitting yeah, here and talking you. and everything, and for sure. Um, Taking time to come up from Tyler and hearing this story because it's something different that we haven't done. We'll definitely have to revisit it and see. We have uh, some more stories about uh, next time we get caught around here and get oh, yeah. some video of him riding his bike and everything else. So, <laughs> uh, but I appreciate it. And like I said, we can uh, check out all your videos. Right? Yeah, is for it sure. on just uh, just is more so, Wade Instagram? I saw so it on my, there. my Instagram is te at Texas M Wade. That's my my okay. handle. Um, and I think I'm pretty sure if you put my name in, you'll probably get a country singer. Yep. But I also pop up. She's act. It's funny. She's actually sent me messages and been like, so many people hit me up asking about BMX stuff. <laughs> and of course, I get all the time. I didn't know you were a country singer. Dang! <laughs> like, and yeah. I'm just like, oh yeah, I got multiple talents. But uh, but yeah. So like, but if you just you can Google my name with BMX attached to it, and yeah. you'll you'll find you'll check find out all those of, videos, of videos more of the stuff, even my it. mistakes on Mega Ramp. Yes. So <laughs> good chance to check all those out, guys, and yeah. check out Morgan and his Instagram site. And appreciate you guys for for joining us again today.